The following podcast contains strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. My name is Craft Ginger and this is Roll for Discussion, a small podcast where myself and a few others will delve into the multiple topics around the popular game of Dungeons and Dragons. If you have any thoughts, opinions about what has been discussed, or topics that you want us to cover, then feel free to post them down below in the comments section. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like and smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell for more. For tonight's session, we'll be covering D&D Horror Stories. This is Roll for Discussion. Joining me in tonight's video, we have Schnitzel. Hey, yo. We have Chadstick. Hey, guys. We have Serena. Hello, everyone. And we have Jason. What's up, everybody? All right, yes. Yeah, so, guys, uh, we have obviously passed Halloween, so I've sort of missed the mark on that one. But it's never, it's never the wrong time, really, to go into your D and D horror stories. Now, I know there's a few of us here that have those. Not everyone does, uh, but I'm pretty certain that most of us also have pet peeves that we have in D and D. So, we're going to start off with horror stories. Now, uh, let's see, Chad Stick, would you like to go first with your first horror D and D horror story? I would, yes. Um, so this is this is like my top one that's really changed how I look at D and D because it's it brought up something that I wasn't aware of people or I didn't even think people would do, um, and um, since then I've had to kind of make sure, especially as a GM, that I've always steered parties away from it if at all possible, because it, it ruined the campaign, really. Um, so, uh, I was playing with some, uh, well, I was going to say friends, they are friends now, I had only been role playing with them a little bit uh, at the time, we were starting a new, or we had started a new campaign, uh, within the same world as the previous campaign, like slightly off in a different country, and uh, we were all wizards, uh, was, was the gimmick, and we're working for this, this wizard nation, and we had to go and try to uproot some rebellion. Um, we um, well, we had a very good GM, and the uh, the players were we all got on well enough. Um, uh, one of the guys, um, uh, his name will be Jacob. Um, hey, wait a minute, that's my name. All right, it was... <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, let me find another magic card. Malachi, no, um, no, we'll call, we'll call him Bob, we'll call him Bob, one of the guys, Bob, Bob uh, was newer to the group, and we'd had some problems when he first joined in the other campaign, but the GM had had a word with him, and, uh, he basically, you know, he, he, he decided that he was gonna, he wanted to stay in our campaign, so he changed his, his character path and traits a little bit to, to fit in better, and not cause problems, and we, in the same way, we reflected that. Um, he brought one of his friends along uh, for this new campaign, um, and Bob's friend was called Michael. Um, is that okay? Michael okay? Yep, Michael's Hello. good. I'm just checking this time. Um, so Michael um, uh, was... I mean, clearly he'd done a lot of role-playing before, he, he was very experienced, he knew what he was doing. And we had quite a large group, I think there were six of us, and two of the players were, were newish. Um, and I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really like uh, Michael's attitude when he first came. He was a bit overly friendly for somebody who's just joining a group. Um, but I also have to preface that with I used to be even more introverted and antisocial than I am now. So um, maybe that was that was just me being a bit judgmental early on. But we, we had a really good DM. I knew the DM really well. So, uh, I trusted his judgement, and we carried on the campaign. And as we went through the campaign, Michael, um, when we found the, the the guy we were trying to uproot, the rebel wizard leading evil blood magicians, 
um, on their sacrificial journey to try to upend the, the wizard king. Um, Michael got two of the newer players to um, lay under his wing and was lay. There's a lot of party discord that he sowed. And it was, oh, you, you, know, you can't even do this. Like, I think I was playing um, an enchanter, and they're not like huge combat mages, but like that's not the point, right? You pick your character, and I knew everybody else was going to be chucking fireballs about, so why should I? Um, so it, it was like, lots of little snippy comments that, that didn't really help party uh, party cooperation or, or good vibes in the group like outside of role playing because like he was new no one knew him um as the campaign went on these two guys that he kind of got on on his side of the fence like literally that was what he said like there are two halves to this party there's us and the guys who aren't worth anything um and like he got them he convinced them that it was a good idea to turn traitor on the wizard king and join the other guys all they had to do was kill us and um like, the more this went on, the more I was like, are, are we serious? Like, uh, we're gonna, you're splitting the party literally down the line, and your objective is now not where it was in the campaign, it's to kill some of the other players. And he, um, it got to the stage where, um, after I found out that my character was actually evil, because I, I went and killed a homeless person so we could use the corpse as a bomb to assassinate the blood magician king, um, yeah, I, like, I, I, my characters are a bit weird sometimes, <laughs> but like, and all of them were suddenly against this, that I'd killed a homeless man, and I was like, you guys are literally plotting to kill your best friends, I don't understand. And um, then there was a, an in-party fight, and I appreciate this can be cool, and this can be what some people want, but it was clear that at least half the party didn't want that. Um, anyway, so we had this in-party combat, and... I kind of seen this coming for a long time and I was just I remember the entire session I was very very angry the entire time that it actually happened and that nothing had been done about it and then at the end of the fight where um, the like my side in inverted commas one although two of our characters were um, killed like actually killed because they didn't just knock us unconscious the guy that Michael told one of the newer, the newest player to go and slit our throats while we were unconscious, and then the newest player did. Um, so we were actually dead. And um, his character, like, was knocked unconscious in the fight was thing. And the DM said, "Don't worry about it. It's, it's not a big deal." And I was like, "It is. Like, I'm not gonna." Uh, at the end of the session, I remember going to walk out and saying, "This was a complete waste of my time. I'm sorry for." any of you who are upset by that, except the guys who caused this problem, because this isn't why we were playing this campaign at all. Um, the guy came up to me, Michael, and he said, um, look, man, I don't want there to be any hard feelings. It was a good fight, and he held out his hand. Like, with an actual smile on his face, <laughs> as if this was all some kind of joke, and um, held out his hand as if to shake it. I remember looking at him and telling him to fuck off before walking out. Because... Um, like, he'd come in, and he changed the entire... And, like, his friend had been on my side of the fence. Like, I... <laughs> um, he'd been like, no, nah, that's not cool. And I remember his friend wasn't very happy about it. And, like, the GM afterwards, he did get in touch with me, as, as a good GM should, and say he didn't realise I was being so annoyed by it. And, I mean, Crafty knows me. I'm often outspoken when I don't agree with things. Um, and I... And he said, look, we're going to change it. Don't worry, your characters aren't dead. We can we can do that in world. And he won't be coming back. And, but it wasn't... Like, I went for another two or three sessions, but I just couldn't enjoy it anymore. Like, the other two newer players um, who had turned traitor on us were there still. And, like, they weren't sorry about it. They didn't see what they'd done as wrong. And I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered with that, you know? I didn't... I was there to have fun for me. I'm not going to sit there and have other people come down on my Saturday afternoon and ruin it. And that's a shame, because it was a really fun campaign until um, that happened. Um, and since then, I've always, like, unless a party particularly wants to be suspicious or, or treacherous of each other, I've always highlighted, like, that in-party conflicts 
shouldn't escalate to the point of actual violence unless there's a very good reason for it. Not just, I'm going to betray the Wizard King because it means I can find the party. Um, so yeah, like at the end of the day, like the guy was ejected from the room, but the campaign fizzled out and uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty shiitake fried my friends. <laughs> I can, I can, I can definitely sympathise uh, with that. Like having, having another player just purposely just mess things up like that. I, mean, I, I can imagine it. This is no intention of the GM for this, for this sort of uh, uh, turn to happen. No, I think the GM was just playing it out, and like we were all going along with it at the time because I think I was, I was also much younger and less experienced at role playing. But I, I was sort of waiting on. Um, that I was waiting on someone to step in and do something. Um, <laughs> so in the end, I guess I had to do that. But you're like, you're right. You're, you're the phrase you used, that, that purposeful damaging and sabotage of the party dynamics of the session is is what made it a horror story for me. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing that one. That actually, uh, there might be a small bit of relevance then, because I think I'll take I think I'll take the lead then for for my story. Um, so, this uh, was my very first campaign I ever run. I uh, I went for a homebrew because um, I, I very much uh, enjoy uh, uh, pirates. So I thought well, I'm going to make my D and D session um, very much themed on that. So there was going to be the, the the party was going to be part of a pirate crew. Um, so we have we have uh, player A. Um, we shall call her Sarah and we have player B and we shall call him uh, Stephen now Stephen out of character um, a bit of a, a bit of a chatterbox doesn't always think things through 100% before he speaks which uh, I guess I, for the majority of people, they could sort of they sort of clog that on very quickly, and so you just took what he was saying with a pinch of salt. You know, he was he was pretty innocent. What he's saying, he's most of what you saying, he's doing it for like a comedic effect. He's not actively he wasn't actively ever out to try to insult anyone or anything like that. However, uh, I believe he this is the thing I still quite we, we still can't work out what exactly it was whether he said it in character or out of character but he made a comment about sarah's character something like something like oh that's stupid or that's dumb and it was it was such a an offhand comment that the majority of us didn't even didn't even recall it happening however sarah took this very personally and decided that now their character's uh, primary goal was to do as much damage to Steven's character as they could which was apparent the very next session where they were out on a ship and they were attacked by a giant squid where they proceeded then to use their fireballs or their fireballs rather at Steven rather than at the tentacles that were trying to um, uh, that were trying to attack the ship now I had uh, already had a homebrew Thing because I had been warned by another one of the players that oh by the way Sarah's quite angry at Stephen and I was like oh all right okay uh, so and she might try to attack him and I was like ah okay well I'll fix that I'll uh, deal with that because at the time and this might have been on me as being a fairly new DM what I should have done was probably go and have a talk with her first about it I thought no I'm going to try to be a bit I'm going to try to be a bit more subtle about it. I put, uh, I had this homebrew enchantment on the ship so that players couldn't uh, intentionally or unintentionally damage each other. They could only attack, uh, they could only damage enemies. So, <clears throat> and at the time, I had mentioned this before uh, before we got, before they were on the ship, but they had all forgotten. So when she went to go and fire a fireball, I mentioned about the uh, bouncing off were like of the reflective like uh, enchantment which had that not been in place would have outright killed him on the spot we all sort of threw it off as a bit of a comical moment and then she proceeded to continuously keep trying to uh, attack him now i did at this point then say to her like you know you are supposed to be working together and 
she told me, oh no, but he's insulted, uh, his character's insulted me. I was like, okay, but we're, you know, you guys are going to have to work together as a team, like down the line. So we're going to try to find a, we're going to try to find a way for you to resolve this. The coming up to the next session um, was I was a, as part of an ongoing story that I had, I was developing. They all developed a, a dream. Uh, where they were given images of certain things. This was to help clue them up to certain items that they were going to be trying to find and there'd be a purpose to why they were finding these items. But I took this opportunity to also uh, pop an image into Sarah's dream where she was hanging off the edge of a cliff in an undisclosed location with Stephen standing above her with his hand outstretched to give the impression that she's going to need him to save her otherwise she's going to die. Sadly, she's taken it as the opposite, that it, it must mean that he must die. I don't know how she sort of worked that one out, but... Anyway, a few sessions go by. Uh, Any time we were around some sort of mountain range, she, uh, she started getting a bit twitchy, because she thought something was up, and again, any sort of excuse to have a go at Stephen, she would take it. Uh, so I was watching the situation quite closely. Uh, we get say about six or seven sessions ahead and not much has happened since then there's an area i've got them all covering a shipwreck uh place it's just there's tons of these um uh like old vessels that are smashed apart there's flowing crates around and i sort of create a mini game where they could try to investigate and search the areas and see if they can find anything and i had there's all these charts set up with these random items and she managed to find an item called an afriti bottle which, those who don't know, you as a DM, you roll a D100, and there are three outcomes. One is the Fritty will work for you for a certain amount of turns. There's one <clears throat> where I think, it, I think it grants you a wish. And then there's the other outcome, which is where it will straight up attack you. And that was if you got a one to three. Now, I decided I wasn't going to disclose what it was at the time, but I ended up rolling a two. When she got the item, and then we, I explained to her what it was, uh, the, literally the first words that came out of her mouth was, I'm going to give this to Stephen. Because she assumed that it was it was going to end up being attack, uh, attack the, the person, and she wanted to use it to, to, to kill the character. However, she pocketed it, and that, that seemed to... That it, every session after that, I kept waiting for her to hand it over, but she never did. They eventually come to uh, this temple, which is being guarded on the, uh, in the center, there's this item that they needed to get, and it's being guarded by a fire elemental. And a few homebrew bits and pieces, uh, the, the group has found a way to communicate with this fire elemental, and he does this whole thing about how he can see into their souls, and he can tell that there is conflict between a couple of them. And in order for them to be worthy of the item, they need to set aside their differences, and he's going to pick two of them to work together. So I chose Sarah and Stephen. He told them that they would have to be, that one of them would have to be lowered down into the pits to reach for the item, and they cannot use any magical abilities as that would be negated. At this point, Sarah says, "I'm leaving." So this was this had been a moment that I had been building up now for about nine sessions. It, a lot of stuff was accumulating onto this, which was going to be a very crucial moment. So I, uh, on a bit of improv, I barricaded the door. She tried to use magical ability, I can't remember what it was, where she could teleport a certain distance. I negated all the magical abilities. She then turned around and said, uh, my character lies down and goes to sleep. Now everybody else is now freaking out because the elemental is becoming extremely angry. Um, he's starting to, uh, basically the elemental is starting to throw a tantrum here because he uh, is not, this is not what was meant to happen. They are meant to work together on this bit. Kind of sort of projected myself into the elemental at this point. While I remained calm, the elemental was losing his absolute might. Uh, I gave them all uh, five, what was it, five or ten real life minutes to convince Sarah to get up and cooperate or the elemental is just going to TPK the lot of them. And everyone is scrambling around trying to sort it out. And just before the elemental was ready to unleash his rage, Sarah stands up and announces, I pull out the Afriti bottle and uncorks it. 
and she clay and she tells it to attack, which she does. Her. And it instantly one shots her. So in the end, her her whole thing about wanting to take down another person, her adamancy that she wanted to kill this other player, every little clue that was put towards her to suggest that she should be working with them and she should be doing everything she can to cooperate. It just ended up backfiring in the most uh, uh, spectacular way and it was the first actual player death we had uh, in the game. Okay, I have to know, I have to know, what did she do after she died? Did she like immediately weep? Did she cry? Did she whine? What'd she do? Did she, did she accuse you of fixing? She did none of the sorts. She just sort of went, okay. And then started talking about making a new character. Like, it seemed like that was the thing that I think that threw me off the most. Was the sort of like, oh, so did you? I mean, what? You so didn't what, even care. Like, if she'd been upset, then, like, because it was her time for revenge that had been taken from her, then she cared. Like, and that was the point. But if she was just doing it as a bit. Yeah. To, and that, that was, that was the, that was really. I was really shocked. It was it, the entire thing was quite infuriating because while I was being the elemental, I wasn't speaking English. I was just making up a language, and I had another character, and I was typing to him, and he's he's uh, translating, he's uh, he's interpreting it uh, for me, and um, and then he's he's sort of, he's DMing me back. He goes, it's like you're getting a bit angry, aren't you? And I'm just sort of typing back as <laughs> I like, I'm fucking I'm freaking furious right now. Like, what the hell? Which means she's lying down. <laughs> I can just imagine you, man. <laughs> what, the, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they are still in the same campaign. They um, are still getting along. I think. I think she's finally getting the hint. I. It's, 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 I. It's just for me personally. I'm just trying. I'm trying very hard not to be that sort of DM where I, I'd like to believe that people can. You can sort of trust that if you've given enough sort of hint stuff, but I am I am learning that sometimes that isn't the case. You do have to just sort of be outright uh, upfront, just to be like, no, this is this is how it is. Are you DMing them right now, or is this one you've already done? No, uh, that campaign is still going. Oh my god! So if she's listening right now. Hi, yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> get 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 your shit together and leave him alone. <laughs> 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 I, I have no idea who you're talking about, by the way. I don't know this campaign you're doing, but that is one of the most psychopathic things I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not playing the game. It's... Like, I did that when I was, you know, five years old. When I was five, I was doing stuff like that. You know, just like trying to stop someone else because they made me upset. This... I've never heard of an adult person doing that. It's, 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 it's really strange because... But that 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 bit of, out the, out of the way with that with her situation with the other character, she's absolutely fine. Like she gets on with she gets on with everyone else. She you know she gets involved and like stuck in with it. She's a little bit chaotic now and then, but not like a she's not like a problem. Really. It's just I think it was more that she had just a personal issue. She just didn't like, and I don't think she likes the other one as a as a person. And I think she used the character as an excuse to try to sort of torment them. Which I'm not sure what her end goal, what she thought was going to happen with that. But I just thought it was just... Because I generally, I I wasn't, I was not going to TPK the party. I, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to have that happen. I wasn't going to have him fuck ruined. But it was going to be the case of, I was just giving him the impression that just trying to sort of push everyone to try to persuade her to sort of get her, get her act together. And in the end, I was going to have the elemental just... Uh, torture, but it was just the fact that then when she pulled out the infinity bottle, and I'm still sitting there going, Oh my god, no, she's, she's gonna, she opened the bottle. Um, right, okay, roll, 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 yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, I imagine when she pulled it out, it was like that moment before um, Hans Gruber in Die Hard when they opened the safe and Ode to Joy starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> you feel there, like, yeah, it's gonna be more beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that, and yeah, when after that it all happened, I, I spoke to I spoke to a friend of mine. I was like, I'm very tempted to send that into Crit Crab. 
Like <laughs> that was yeah, that's that's the guy I was going to mention. <laughs> but yes, that is that is uh, effectively it's my only it's my only horror story. Because otherwise, every, every all the other experience I've had has been fantastic. So that's that's my contribution. Um, uh, Jason, did you uh, have any stories? Uh, I do, uh, and actually, uh, it involves uh, to, uh, let's see. We'll call them Crafty and <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No, you can't. Okay, no, it's not. Uh, you guys weren't the. Uh, you guys uh, weren't the issue here. Oh, good. <laughs> this is what happened good. after you? Good. Oh, okay. All right. Bad hit. Bad hit. Bad hit. The, the, uh, the stop record button. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, coward! You are an absolute coward! No, it's all right. Go on, I'll take, I'll take it. I got, I got a high AC. <laughs> yeah, you guys will remember the session. Um, in Nathan, Nathan, you were in this campaign. I don't think you were here for this particular session, but um, you guys will remember the session. Um, it's not what happened in, during the game. It's what happened after the game that I don't think I've told you guys. Um, so, just for everybody listening, we had a campaign that we never finished up. I kind of want to go back and do a final play level. You know, that's for another day. But, uh, so basically, um, uh, what was that? I think, like, uh, there was a section where uh, this person's goat got loose, and uh, the party, they recruited some members of the party to go, you know, find the goat. And they end up finding the goat, and it's in this field. And out of nowhere, a wyvern comes down, and attempts to get the goat. Actually, thinking about it, I think, Nathan, you were there. Nathan was I... here because I'm remembering this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I'm okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Flashbacks. Yeah, no, I... Now I remember Nathan, he, like, lassoed the wyvern and it was, like, dragging oh, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot that. I threw it at his tail and I just was dragged along the ground. <laughs> <laughs> In his favorite position. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyways, um, so the eventually um, Nathan's brother, who was also in our group, uh, his name's David, and he rolled. Uh, the, the wyvern turned out to be quite a bigger uh, threat than they initially thought, and then I initially thought because I was a very fairly new DM at the time and I didn't know what challenge rating was so um, <laughs> and, uh, it's just a number I, it's like I yeah yeah it's a piece of there actually is uh, but uh, David is realizing that they're probably not going to be able to kill this thing David says I'm going to try to roundhouse kick knock this sucker out and he rolled a nat 20 and me not knowing that a net 20 didn't always get you what you want, I went, whoa, he just knocked out this wyvern. <laughs> so, yeah, so this like level two or level three character just knocked out a wyvern. And I'm like, this is such a cool moment. And everything, you know, the session was like, ah. Oh. And um, so I went on to, and this is the part that you guys don't know about. Um, so I'm in a uh, Facebook group um, for D and D. It's a it's a Christian D and D Facebook group that I'm in, and I go on there and I'm like, uh, "Hey guys, let me tell you about this. Uh, my friend just nat twenty uh, roundhouse kicked the wyvern unconscious." The comments did not agree with me. <laughs> uh, Let's just say people were very opinionated about um, Nat Twenties, <laughs> and, um, and you know, I, I think I said uh, it, so I don't know if I said it in the comments or in the original post, but I said like I was a fairly new DM, and I remember there was this one guy in particular. He's saying like, "Hey, he's a new DM. It's his game, and goes in late." Um, and people are saying, well, you know, natural 20s will get you what you want. And so like, it's like this huge thread going down. And I, don't, I, I can't remember how many people were like, 
saying I didn't do anything wrong, how many people said, like, hey, you can do this better. And it, I, think, I, pro- I think I probably said somewhere in there, like, you know, I mean, I probably, I may have, think, I've only been DMing for, like, I don't know, a month. So, um, but eventually, this one dude, I mean, he was just, like, defending me to the point where I'm like, please don't defend me anymore. I don't want you to <laughs> um, But he ended up going on to, like, uh, he ended up going on to like outside the post, like onto the main page, uh, and I won't, uh, I won't, you know, quote what he said, but basically he was saying like, I thought you were supposed to be like this Christian, you know, supportive community, and that's clearly not what you. I'm like, I didn't mean to, you know, I didn't mean to like launch, send this, this channel into like a civil war over a nat twenty. I just wanted to tell a cool story. Um, and eventually, uh, I believe he was. Re- uh, and I'm just like, do I want to tell any more stories of what happens in our campaign? It's <laughs> <laughs> like this giant war. And it's like, holy crap. Well, I'm just wondering, because like the next session we tamed the wife. So like, I wonder how well that, that conversation would have gone down. Yeah, I don't think I told him about that. <laughs> Maybe they, they would have been more in for that. Yeah, well, here's the thing. He tried to pet it. He said, I'll go to pet the wyvern. And he rolled a net one. Well, there's no way to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Being the fact that I was in that campaign, I had to obsess. Screw all those people. That was one of the best moments I've ever had. Yes. Okay. And that's because I, I, was yeah. great. I was unconscious, okay? I was unconscious. All oh, what else? Basically broken in half because I had lassoed the wyvern and dragged around a field for an hour, half an hour, and we slammed the wyvern. I woke up and we had a freaking wyvern pet, and I was like, okay, I don't even care what happened before this. This is the best thing ever. So I, I will. I think Jason did a great job. I thought, I, I cool. thought it was I thought it was hilarious at the time. Like that was that was my first like like proper like campaign I've been going in. So I I didn't know any better. So I'm thinking like you know oh yeah we're bloody rocking this. this, is, this is Fantastic. <laughs> I, We're already I, killing birds. Uh, this is great. I will say, I do have the clip. I have the clip of that moment happening. And your your face, Jason, when you realize, like, well, at the time when you think, like, he's absolutely smashed it. Right. I'll, I will get that clip. I will post it. At the, I will post it in this. I'll do an edit and I will post it in this video. Finish it, Bewilder. All right. Um, <laughs> after, after I, uh, land from my kick and dodge the bite, I do another, um, uh, kick, this time to the back of the head to try to knock it out. Holy crap, um, may, alright, make a strength check. I really miss this first. I only got five. <laughs> I'm very strong. I thought I was the one who was drunk. <laughs> so you run up and you try to kick him, and uh, you just kind of like barely grazed him. So is that an attack or is that a that was we'll say, yeah that was an attack that was an unarmed strike. Okay. Um. Well then, I'm going to do my other unarmed strike. I guess I'll do the exact same thing again. Maybe I'll do better. So I guess I'll rare dro- roll another strength check. Strength check. <laughs> All right, this time I got a nat twenty. Ooh, nice. But it is actually you... minus one, so it's actually nineteen. You still roll but it's a still nat twenty. I don't. Holy crap! I cannot believe this. Okay. Uh, so Sandro rolls up and he. It was, is it like a roundhouse kick? Yeah, like I try, like I, you know how they they do multiple kicks in a row, like do a round kick, land, and then do a round kick, land. That's what I did. I missed the first time. All right. Or like grazed him the first time, and then next time I got him right in the, right in the All spinal right. cord. So you you come back and you launch this huge kick to the base of his skull, and he goes, oh. and he falls on the ground unconscious. Sandro just knocked a wyvern unconscious, y'all.
That was such a, and it comes down to like, you know, you got to decide how much are you going to follow the rules and how much do you want to like, you know, pamper your players and make them do all the, like have them accomplish all these awesome things. And I guess, I guess at the end of the day, you got to find a balance. And just be careful of which groups you post these comments to. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christian D&D &D group, like, well, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I, I need to point out that in my secondary school, when I, um, in uh, an RE lesson, um, we were asked by uh, a visiting um, preacher uh, if any of us played D&D, &D, and I put my hand up, um, and I was accused of being a godless heretic, and that's a quote. So, oh, um, the, the phrase Christian D&D &D is intriguing for me. <laughs> that's my own, it's literally my only actual Christian D and D experience. So I'm the glad you had a. Back into D and D is in the phrase band at my church that I played. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. It's come a long way. Yes. Yeah, thing when when people when mothers in the early 2000s for us all of us people who were born in the late 90s early 2000s told us that Harry Potter was. If you watch Harry Potter, you were going to hell. Oh, yeah. 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 My mom was Harry Potter, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Power Rangers, everything. Well, have um, have you guys and viewers, uh, if you've watched Stranger Things, the, this isn't a massive spoiler, so don't worry about it. There's um, some there's some very Christian right-wing hate for D&D &D displayed in that as part of the, the storyline. But it is representative of what happened at the time in America. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, it's yeah. uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's been had, it's had a lot of a lot of uh, negative what? like uh, throwback for a long time. But I mean, it's it's quite silly. It's, I think it's more of a case of people just didn't understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think it's really good that Jason's found this group where there are people who were supportive because let's remember not all of the it was a, it was a rules debate at the end of the day, and we all know that they can get hotly contested. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, right. Uh, Sarah, did you have a, a story at all? Uh, I mean, so my story isn't long, but it's about my first attempt at playing D&D in person and also my first attempt at DMing, so... Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's hear it. So I, so I asked a few people that had, like, some kind of interest in D&D that I knew personally, uh, so I decided to make, like... So I started to Write, write the story, the world, you can see. So, yeah. <laughs> I had only made, like, a few sessions at the time. So, I, I, that was, like, a lot of work for me. I needed, I needed to, like, study, like, a huge amount of stuff to learn everything. And, yeah. After setting everything up, it turned out that every, everyone that I know needs about, like, making a, a campaign and the session just a zero, zero, you can say. Thought, they, thought I was joking, so, um... And yeah, they weren't really interested in learning anything, so the session never happened. So, uh, it might not sound like a horror story, but it was one from Your my horror perspective. Story is that you never got the chance to have a horror story. Yeah, that's, yep. that's, that is a ghost story, because you were ghosted by <laughs> West. <laughs> how long, um, how much time had you spent, like, uh, preparing for that? Uh, let's see. Maybe like five hours. Well, it's not I mean, that much, but it's no, still no, no, like no, a lot. But for a first five hours, though, that's, that's still quite a lot. I mean, that's five that's hours. That's half a work day. More yeah. than half a work day. Yeah, it was the entire day after school. And all my free time there. went there for one day. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that would that. Yeah, I can, I can. That, that would, that would have crushed me. Yeah, <laughs> if that had been if that had been my first time you know, trying to do try to do that, and that's that's how I ended up going. I'm not sure how much I, I would have lost a hell of a lot of motivation for a while on that one. That would yeah, I never had a I've never had a horror story, but it it the only thing that's come close to it is I'm very sad that any of the the campaigns that we've done we haven't finished, and we've left these characters like unfinished in their stories. That just makes me very sad because it's like ah. Oh, I wish mm. we could have done this. I wish we could have done that. But everybody has lives and business and, and things like that they have to do. So. Goddamn reality. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 
whoa, 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 whoa. It's not Australia. <laughs> okay, At least the um, wildlife here is pretty tame. <laughs> uh, Chesley, did you have uh, another story? I do. Um, I want to give a, a content warning, a trauma warning here, because um, it is about uh, inappropriate sexual behaviour. Um, and I know we're going to do another session another time on, like, why do people bring sex to D&D, so I won't get into that now. Um, uh, I'll be I'll be, I'll be, be short and snappy about it. Um, so it, w- it wasn't actually D&D, it was a different system. Um, uh, Call of Cthulhu, which is much more uh, heavily roleplay based, because if you get into combat, either you, you die or you're then guilty of murder and have to <laughs> deal with that as a consequence. Um, and this was this was like a really pulpy one shot, and it was a really good session. Um, and the the horror story here isn't like hugely scarring or whatever, but um, there's uh, one of the players. She um, she and I had like kind of like this on and off flirting thing, um, but I uh, I think this is a little more lighthearted, like. It's not scarring, I guess, but I think it's a situation that has featured similarly for other people. That was a lot worse. Um, and basically, yeah, so she was she was quite into me, if I toot my own horn. Uh, no, but that, that's the situation. <laughs> that was the situation <laughs> that it was. Um, and we got on and stuff. I, I just, uh, this was years ago before, uh, well, actually, I, I think I, yeah, so it was after, it was after you start, after I met you, from Crafty. All right. Um, but like in, in that period when you weren't really uh, available uh, so much um, and um, she um, she came along I, I, like she asked to get involved she wanted to get involved in role playing that was fine I just started um, a pretty serious relationship um, which she knew about and like we, we put an end to our, our stuff um, and um, near the end of the session, uh, they broke into this antechamber where a ritual was being produced, and basically they had to try to stop the ritual from happening, or they were going to summon this um, otherworldly horror thing into the world, uh, which would end it. And um, everyone was having a great time until she failed a sanity test and saw that the otherworldly horror trying to clamber through this, this this ball of tentacles and things. Um, uh, trying to clamber through with eyes coming out of everywhere. Uh, actually looked like um, the most beautiful person she'd ever seen uh, in her life. And um, uh, it basically um, asked her to help it and come to it and give, give it her love, uh, which she then role-played um, very verbally in great detail to me, um, which was made even more awkward apart from that situation because it was the first time that I was jamming for my brother who was sitting on the table opposite her. Oh. And uh, I like, and what I should have done is, as a GM, probably steer things away from it. But I didn't know what to do at the moment. I guess I kind of panicked, um, and I basically had to role play a weird um, tentacle sex scene whilst with during her initiative step, while everybody else was desperately trying to save her from being eaten alive by the evil octopus god that was going through the wall. Um, and it made me feel very uh, uncomfortable. Um, like it's funny now, and um, I spoke to her about it later. But at the time, I remember it being intensely, powerfully. <laughs> yeah, to try to describe technical sex in front of my brother. Um, and uh, like she apologised. She said she, she like she recognised that she could have led it differently as well. But. Um, yeah, it was really, really awkward. And I think... I was thinking this whole time, a line, okay, it's not as weird. But as soon as you said it first, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, and I was sitting around the table. It was weird. Um, I mean, it was also sort of weird. Like, my brother was... Uh, <laughs> he was role-playing an Egyptian princess. Um, first time he'd met any of my friends who were coming down to roleplay and some of them knew him from school and he'd always been a bit of like a you know one of the cool job kids and they were a bit nervous so he he did a great job 
being an Egyptian princess, I uh, did not get involved in anything in particular. Um, but this this other girl, yeah, did. She thought it would be fun for us to roleplay that in the woods, and it might have been, but not in that moment, at that point in my life. Well, I was going to say, definitely keep hold of that story for uh, when we do uh, go over the topic about bringing, uh, bringing like sexualizing D and D, because I think that's that's a that's a really good uh, uh, point to bring up. I think there's, there's definitely a good few points in that. Uh, to bring into discussion on that one. Yeah, th thanks, Crafty. I'll relive that trauma again for you in another session. Uh, well, you know, it's probably what, it's probably what the viewers will want. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mate. They're, they're, they're into D&D. &D. It's a small step into tentacle hands. Hey, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say a slither. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I got, I got, I got. <laughs> Keep that image out my mind when I next bring in the giant squids into my campaign. So, it's always a risk, man. It's always a risk. Yeah. You never know who's <laughs> in your session until you bring in the giant squids, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I might start, a new, might start a new thing and just like take a favourable quote out of each session. I think that will have to be the headline. Like, yeah, yeah, and use it on like the... Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'll be the first. <laughs> With that, that'll be how your viewers know me. <laughs> oh, he's the typical sex guy. Dang it. Um, I was the victim. Uh, um, all right, okay, so I think we've uh, we've done quite well there. With the old uh, horror stories. Um, yeah, he's still recovering. I have to just uh, so let's move on to the uh, to the other part of this uh, topic, and it is pet peeves in D and D. And I think I'll gonna I'll start this one off. My I think my biggest pet peeve is say you've you've planned you've, you've planned everything together, you've all got a day set up, and someone decides that they are going to just drop out on the day with no context whatsoever. They're just going to be like, yep, not coming, see you next time. Now, if it's, for me, if it's a session where it's there's not going to be like a key moment in there and it's more like a filler or it's like it's traveling from one place to another, so it's not absolutely vital that their character is part of it, not a big deal. This was, for this particular one that I'm thinking of, was a session zero. So, where, for me, I feel like everyone needs to be there for this one. And they had had two weeks to give plenty of notice. Now, I've already, I already touched upon this a bit in last session, so I know I'm going to repeat, but for me, per for me, it's the, it's the lack of communication from the players to the DM or GM. Uh, for me, that's, that's my probably biggest pet peeve in all of this. That and people not paying attention, like, uh, during the combat. So, like, you, you've been going around, table uh, going through the initiative and then it goes on to one player's turn and it turns out they've been on their phone the whole time and they have no idea what's going on whatsoever because they, they haven't been listening so then you're now reiterating what's going on you're taking everyone out of the game for a moment just so that you can get this person caught up and then they do it again the next time those for me that's those are my those are my biggest pet peeves Yeah, I have, I have got a knack for this. Damn. I, th I think what you've done is just named it like nearly every GM's pet peeve. There. Like, oh, I think, yes, I'm in fairness to you, yeah, well, no, no, that's not what I meant, man. But yeah, you are. You're basic. Oh, uh, oh wow. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> you, uh, I, just, I just think we all agree with you. Like, it's horrible for me. Like, if if a player just cancels on the day, like. And they knew it was happening. I think a lot of people think D and D's cancelable because it's it's just D and D. You know, I'm not doing anything particular, but it's a massive slap to your GM, isn't it? Yeah, especially it's like you know you go through. All... I think I think my mic's cutting out. I apologize. Um, okay, let's try that again. Yeah, um, but I think I totally forgot what I was going to say. My mic distracted me. Uh, 
Yeah. Was it where people just sort of drop off because they don't really see it as like oh. you're really doing anything? Yeah. The the difference between D and D. He got out again. <laughs> 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 I was really hoping he was faking it on purpose. <laughs> and take three. He can't. I think we lost him. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Okay. Thank goodness. Okay. So, um, the difference between D&D and a lot of other games, like, uh, like I have people come over to play Magic the Gathering. Um, you know, that's kind of like a self-contained, uh, you know, oh, we'll just come over and play this game. D&D is like an ongoing story where if someone misses it, then you have to find a way to work around them, then find a way to bring them back in. Um, that was that was an issue uh, that I had uh, with that first campaign. Um, and a lot of this goes with just like having way too many players. Because uh, we had like, I, I lost count of how many people nine. ended up coming into that campaign. We had so we were like, players. Oh. Say what? We had nine players. Nine players total. <laughs> Yeah, and for uh, like a, G a GM or a DM like me who was like just starting out, I was like, okay, how am I gonna? This person, oh, they stayed behind and took a nap in this house while they went and did this. Um, and then I also had another. There was one session. Uh, someone had to leave mid session. I don't even remember the reason they gave. And I'm like, well, you're fighting this dude right here. Uh, why are you leaving? Then I have to like, and then no one ever caught anyone up for the next session. But anyways, but yeah, long story short, D&D is like an ongoing thing where you have to kind of like keep track of developments that are happening. Um, so yeah, missing a session is a little bit more of a big deal than like missing a poker game or something. Yeah, 100%. I think, I wonder if people sort of, how much they conflate a D&D game with like a, like a, a video game or something where they figure they can just pick back up from where they let where they last left off you know yeah it's like there's very little for them for it and it might be a case of i wonder if this applies more if you the, the people that tend to drop off like that i think and this is only from what i've experienced so far so i could be completely wrong here but i think those are the sort of people that have not really ever dm themselves so they don't fully appreciate what it is that the DM has gone through to actually get everyone there. Exactly, yeah. I'd, um, I'd also, you mentioned the computer game thing there. I think a lot of people's experience before they play like D&D of roleplay games will be with computer games, where it's much easier to drop in and drop out, even if it's an MMO, um, like World of Warcraft. They're, so they don't, they, you know, they've already got a, a preset behavior pattern in their mind about all the etiquette of how things work and so they think that's going to be the same because it's the same sort of thing right yeah. um but it's, it's not because it's not a computer game there's someone actually running it for you yeah exactly and again yeah yeah no, i think i think you're absolutely spot on with that one i i, I think i think a lot of it is just a lot, a lot of that lack of understanding and like you said like a preset mind but um uh Saron, do you uh do you have any pet peeves not really, to be honest. <laughs> Very easy going, fella. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I didn't expect everyone to have one. But, um, no, that's fine, right? Uh, what about you, Shinizu? I do. I do, because I am not an idiot. <laughs> 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 At least he admits it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you always try to take them? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you're on to something. Um, no, but I mean it like this, and, and listen, I do, I try not to do this, but I know my own flesh and blood, like my brother does this, where we'll be like, okay, we can do this session, we can do it between Monday and Friday, who's available? And then someone will be like, well, actually I have this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Friday, so I can only do it between this and this time on a Thursday, and it's like, if you don't have much time to do this, then maybe it's not a great idea to sign up if you are very, very, very busy and 
I mean, I'm a, I understand not everybody can be like me where I have the nights off and I'm available to do, I can move stuff around that I can take an entire night and be good. But when it's everybody else and it's like, oh, we, we gotta skip this week, we gotta get it back in three weeks because, oh, everybody's busy because this person has this and this person has this. It's like, oh man, it makes it so much harder for me to get into it because it's like, are, is everyone else trying to like get involved with this as well? Is it, this is just on the third or fourth thing you want to do? You know, list of things that you're doing already, and I don't mean to be insulting to anyone. I understand people have lives, but it's just like, man, I, I feel like I could be doing something else if no one else really wants to be here. It's no, just, I. Oh, we have to do this. Yeah, I, no, I, I think I think it. you um, I think you definitely touch upon something there because I, I have I have seen it where I, like well, I say we so for, I'll take an example Jason's um, Discord where we've we've asked out. Like all the people on there, it's like, oh, who wants to jump in and do some D and D? And you get, you can get quite a few people say, oh yeah, I want to do that. And then when it comes to the actual like consistency, how often are you going to be around stuff? You suddenly find that these people have basically no time around, or it has to be a very specific day, a very specific time. And it's sort of, and I wonder if it comes back to maybe again they don't maybe they don't fully understand that this isn't like. If everyone's available at the same sort of time, fine. But to be so specific about when it can be done, I, I it cause a, it definitely cause a lot of issues when you're trying to like schedule things. Yeah, people don't realize how big of a commitment it is. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was one. There's a, a friend of mine. She was uh, running uh, a campaign. And the people that had been uh, part of it hadn't. I don't think they had been fully clued in. And after they did their first session for about an hour and a half, they were asking her, like, well, how long is this supposed to be running for? And she's letting them know, you know, it averages out, you know, could be between like two and three hours for a session. And like, well, how many sessions will it be? It's like, well, it depends on, depends on, every, on a lot of factors, but you could be looking at a few months. And most of these people then just dropped out after the first session because they just, they're not aware of like how much of a commitment you could end up putting into a game of D&D. But that's... Well, that's part yeah, of, that's... I guess, the new player experience, isn't it, right? Like, yeah. You don't understand that it's not a game, it's a pain. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. Uh, Chatting, you got any pet peeves? Um, yes. Uh, I really hate it when um, players don't like me having tentacle sex with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, no, that's not. I, uh, literally, that one was for gags. That one was for gags. Um... If, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if that's what you've got to get a reflex. Um, uh, uh, I really hope I don't make this a recurring bit. Um, <laughs> it already is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it charges per hour. No. Um, damn, what's my pet peeve? I, um, so I mentioned it in that, the, uh, the other session we did. I don't like intra party conflict just for dick measuring um but i went into that last session so people can go back and listen to that for reviews see your channel um and also because i i've already done that so the one i'll bring up here is arguing with the gm now um oh, some yeah. of your listeners uh because they're mutual friends of ours might say but chadstick you do that all the time i challenge a dm i like i'll i'll bring up something that I, like, if they say this, your character wants to do this, or this is what happens to you, or, you know, if they're telling me something that I don't think I that would fit my character or the situation, I'll challenge them on it. I'll say, actually, I don't think that'll be cool. And I, I will admit, I'm not always doing it in that way. But, um, yeah, like, after the first challenge, if they say, no, that's what happens, you just kind of go with it. it like, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I've been sulky about it, but it's people who sit there and argue about the rules um, and say no. That according to page seventy-three on paragraph two, if you want to do a grapple while in the air, it's actually a, an acrobatics check. You know that that kind of stuff. Yes. That your DM's just trying to run the game, and like it annoys other players, it slows down the rate of play. You you had this thing, this cool idea in your head, and the GM's not gone with it. And I've seen that enough, and I know I come up with some weird ideas um, to try it. Like, and if I've got a concept that I think I want to do for the character, which I nearly always have now, I'll speak to the GM beforehand and be like, hey, eventually, at like level 5, when I've got the, this combination of things, I want to 
do this? Is that going to be, do you agree that this is what the rules do? So I'll talk about it before, way before it happens. So the GM knows I'm building towards it. It's not a gotcha moment. They don't feel I'm trying to trick them into anything. And if they say, nah, I'm not going to run that. At that point, I'll be like, okay, cool. Because then I can go back to the drawing board. Um, people argue with the GM because they care. It's not because they want to cause problems, but it annoys everybody around the table, including the person arguing with the GM. So like, challenge them by all means. But if they, after the first rebuke, if they can, if they consider it and they then still reject your idea, what do you got? You know, I I, I would completely agree with you on this one. Um, I, we sort of touched upon this, I think, in a previous session, and. I didn't use the I didn't use the phrase challenge, but I think that actually that sums it up perfectly. To challenge a DM, I don't see a problem with it. There's something like, like you said, if it's like a you're challenging them about a choice between making an acrobatics or an athletics check, you know, or something and like that. You don't that. already have equal stats in both. That's my that's my biggest pet peeve. Whether like, oh, actually, it's acrobatics, and I'm like, oh, okay, fine, let's do an acrobatics check. Well, it's still a nineteen, like. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I think the, the other thing is like your if your GM still says uh, like it, that's the way it is. They might not know the rules. They might be interpreting it in a different way. They might be doing it for a reason you don't know, and they can't tell you. So like, yeah, yeah. But you got to, but it's it's a crucial thing to learn, isn't it? Is that at the end of the day, in the G, it's the GM's rule. It's there. They can use the books as a guideline, and they can also have in different interpretations to it if they so if they see fit to it it's the dm is going to make that final decision so challenge them sure if they've given you their ruling on it leave it alone if you want to con for me personally i'd say if you want to you want to continue that conversation wait until the session's over mm. don't pull everyone out of the game because you want to argue the toss you know yeah because in the moment it feels really important but like it's D, D. like by the time you've gone down to the pub and had a drink or you know whatever you're like actually it doesn't really matter no. um the other thing is your gym might not know the rules um of the intrinsically detailed thing you're trying to do so when you say actually when you really give the challenge and show them the rules they might be like oh okay, okay then like do it in an intelligent way don't just you know throw a knife at them that's a joke never throw a knife at your gym. <laughs> never throw a knife at your gym. <laughs> Uh, does anybody have anything else to add? Um, I did have one more uh, that I wanted to just say. Players, please try not to talk over each other because it makes it very difficult. Oh, I don't know DM. what you're talking. I don't know what you're talking about, Jason. Oh, shut up! Come on, let's <laughs> <that's> me. <laughs> 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 yeah, but really, like, um, it, it's really hard because I don't know what to react to like if i have one player saying i want to stab this person and another one's like i want to sneak by i'm like crap i don't know what <laughs> what do i do and also and that kind of leads into party please uh and that kind of goes off of uh what you were saying chad like party uh try to you know work together don't like go off and do your you know don't like turn against each other try to like move as like you know a cohesive unit if you can <laughs> like don't or like functional cohesion. Yeah, the last the last uh, session I ran, I had a player. Uh, uh, one of my players uh, threw. Uh, he said something out of character. Uh, I don't remember what it was. And in in game, the uh, another person's like, I didn't like that comment. I throw a bucket at him. Like, uh. So, yeah. and they were they were working together to put out a fire, and this person character just randomly throws a bucket. So please just. Try to stay on the same page yeah. and try not to talk over each other so that the DM can actually, you know, progress forward. I mean, the, the other thing is, like, um, so I, I've been at the, the heart of an inter-party dispute. So we were doing this really cool concept campaign. The DM was completely fresh. Much He was like, he was 18, fresh out of college, doing this before he went to university because he wanted to get into D&D there and be a GM. And he'd run this campaign. We'd all come up with these really cool character concepts. And he'd said, you know, you guys need to be big players or like representatives of big players in the world already because you're coming together to fight this otherworldly threat. So if you don't all get on, that's fine, but you do have the same objective. Um, so as part of the party, we had a, a paladin um, and a monk who was lawful good 
and then my character, which was an anti-paladin, um, and was awful evil uh, as a result. Um, and the DM said, "Here, here are the rules that you have to abide by." And one of them that was, I had to, <laughs> I had to kill an innocent in cold blood every week because um, I was like, I was the in-world, like I was following the in-world big bad, like it, it had to be evil. And I was like, okay, cool, that adds up. And I managed to get away with it a little bit, away from party, like other party eyes. And the others were all like, oh no, he is that person. But I was, tr I was avoiding it. Like I was avoiding the conflict because I wasn't doing it in front of the others. Because my character's not dumb. He's just completely dispassionate. Anyway, in the end, it came down to me facing off against the bunk when he found out I was going to kill this slaver. Um, and he saved the slaver's life on a technicality because he wasn't an innocent. He had he was guilty, uh, and we were just we were literally in the middle of it uh, in character. But it must have looked like quite serious to this poor new GM, me and this other guy. We, we get on out of the game, yelling at each other about the definition of innocence and what cold blood and all of that. Um, I think we're getting deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was, he, it was in character. It made sense. So we were going with it, and it was it was you know. Um, but it was frustrating because this was like my last day, um, and I mended that problem by <laughs> we were going to wherever the slave was going, and I just stabbed one of the guards as soon as I got there. So I did lose my <laughs> paladin powers, and the and the bug was like it wasn't in the right place to stop me. But afterwards, I went up to the other guy and I said, "Look, I know this is looking like it's going to be a problem. I've been trying to avoid it. I was given these precepts by the GM." And that's why I'm doing it. I'm not just doing it to be a dick. And I was like, I was hoping that was the case, but I wasn't sure. I understand that, but, uh, you know, obviously our characters are not aligned, and that's part of what our campaign is about. But we talked about it, so as players, we were fine with each other. As characters, it got awkward. <laughs> yeah. But, like, like, if you've got those inter-party problems, you can talk to players. Like, the GM doesn't have to do all the work. Like, don't rely on your GM to resolve your conflicts. They're not your parent. Like, talk to the other players. Yeah, and exactly. And on that solid bit of advice, we are going to end the session there. I would like to thank Schnitzel, Chadstick, Sarone, and Jason for uh, joining me in tonight's episode. You guys, you want to say your farewells? If I don't meet any identical monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was debating whether to say something along those lines too, but yeah, I'll just say goodbye. Uh, I'll say goodbye, but I'll take this opportunity to pitch my um, only suckers. It's my only fans for the tentacle D&D that I'm <laughs> um, no, I hope to be invited back to the channel. <laughs> this is going to be a thing now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, everything needs a gimmick. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>